Hi there, my friend and friends. I recently had the chance to sit down with Yuna Kravitz, who's the web UI DevRel lead at Google, co-host of the CSS podcast, and just all around wonderful person. And we got to talking about with all the new things that are coming to CSS, if it's harder to learn it now than it used to be, as well as the process that it takes for new features to land in the browser once they've been thought of, and also her favorite new CSS features that have landed in the last couple of years. And so we're gonna jump right into it with her answering my question about whether she thinks CSS is harder to learn now than it used to be. I think it's a misconception that is harder now. Um, I think it's different now. So for example, you mentioned float. You don't need to learn float until you want to create a layout in which you have text or something next to an image, like a newspaper layout. So you're using float for the thing that you need it for. You have more tools now. So in the past, you'd have to learn more hacks to be able to accomplish the same things. You're still learning stuff. It's just in a more roundabout way, right? Um, and another thing that I tell people, because this is something that I'm also concerned with, like I don't want people to get overwhelmed by the amount of features that are landing. Uh, you don't have to use everything. If it doesn't make sense for you and your use case, you don't need to use it. I think there's some fundamental things that developers should know about and should use. And then for the rest, look it up, find a tutorial, like see what the solutions are out there. The solutions are now a lot more simple um, than they were for most things, I think. It's just, there's more of them. <laughs> there's more ways to do things. Yeah, I do get, sometimes I'll post certain things. I did some some stuff on CSS units a while back and people were using, I, I think, I based it was I think after Adam had tweeted about um, the new units that had been added, so we're up to fifty four length units, I think it was, and so I was sort of going through them, and there were some comments from people being like, "This is this is how you know CSS is like a bad language or something," and I'm like, "No, I think it shows that it's a mature language because we're coming up with more solutions to like these niche problems, and that you know you don't have to learn all of these units, but you're going to be really happy when that unit exists in that right. one situation where you need it." Yeah, I I think what is challenging now too is with some of the modern stuff, I always try to make it really clear what the browser availability is because the I hate giving a talk and getting people excited and then at the end being like, this is only available in one browser engine, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's challenging too, like with some, I hope that's not gonna be such a problem in five years, you know, or even less, mm -hmm. but um, that's something to kind of keep in mind. With the units, uh, when you phrase it that way, like there's 54 different units. Yeah, sure, that sounds complicated, but like they're like centimeters and inches. Like you're not going to need to know that for web development unless you're doing print stuff and you're going to want to know it. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on your use cases and needs. Yeah. It's like you said, like you, you, you find like with Anchor coming now, like it's, yeah, it's another thing to learn, but we're going to be really happy that we have it. We're going to be so happy we have it because now if you want to do anchoring, you have to learn a library. Or you have, if you have to build it by scratch, and that's a lot more work. That's a lot more to learn than just mm -hmm. using native anchoring. I've been very deep in anchoring lately, so I'm just like, that's where my head is right now. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I've, I've actually just saying before about browser support. It's one of those things where I, like I've sort of had to hold back on some of the things I want to make videos on, just because I'm like, I don't want to put this out, and it's like only behind a flag somewhere or whatever, and then everywhere, you know. And so I've actually held back on diving. I played with it a little bit, but I haven't done much with it yet. Um, yeah, uh, that one has actively been like, um, you know, shifting in the past few weeks. In the last three weeks, there was three breakout working group meetings just to resolve yeah. like the, a couple of spec issues to get V1 sort of wrapped up for anchoring. Um, it's a really exciting API, but I think it'll be more to talk about and finalize when it is actually going to ship in a stable browser, which is soon, hopefully. Speaking of the maturation of CSS, uh, as we've sort of alluded to, you've been a part of it. Um, I know you were talking about um, anchoring. Uh, you've also, I think, been involved with select list as well. It makes me really curious what the process is like working on something that hasn't been implemented in a browser yet. Very slow. <laughs> so, so the process is as follows. Identify a problem, right? Then write an explainer on some ideas and how to solve it then bring it to a working group or um, some other standards body to try to figure out a solution. So those become specs or specifications. I know that I've been saying the word spec. It's a specification that has um, basically how this feature should work. 
um, in browsers. And you know, if you want to go read the specs, I read the specs. They're they're a little, a little harder to read than a blog post. But they some, have the newer <laughs> the newer ones are better than some of the old ones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some awesome spec writers on those teams. Um, specifically, what's interesting about things like Popover, Anchor, and Select are that there's so much overlap with HTML and CSS that there's a community group, a separate community group called OpenUI that's been doing a lot of the incubation of ideas, which then get graduated to the CSS working group for CSS things or the what working group for HTML things. Um, and so, you know, you have a lot of discussion. <laughs> you write this back, you open issues. For us, like on the DevRel team, we do a lot of like, actually playing with the prototype. So building samples, finding edge cases, identifying bugs, like figuring out what else is missing. Does it actually solve user needs? Does it, you know, work as intended? Um, and so that often leads to additional open issues and discussion uh, with Anchor specifically. There's a lot of things that has have evolved in the process of that spec maturing. Um, and even now, like I feel like there's a bunch of open issues for anchor stuff that's moving into like the next version of the spec because it's like, how do we solve that right now? We don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess that's the process. And then when you get the spec uh, sort of resolved on, then it graduates as a whole graduation process um, and prototyping slash implementing into stable. So if it's bef before the spec is sort of finalized, it's usually a prototype. So it's in, um, you know, in Chrome, it would be Canary or tech preview and in Safari or um, Nightly for Firefox. Um, but then once we feel confident about it, we'll sh branch it into the whatever branch it's going to for Chromium, whatever. Um, and then it's available to developers. And we hope that other browsers will also implement it and then everyone will <laughs> kumbaya and joy. <laughs> It makes me wonder just because obviously like early on things are behind a flag, um, which from what I understand was learning from the mistake of, of prefixing things <laughs> and as to, in, in a way of saying, don't use this yet. So we sort of, it makes it harder to get to a little bit. Uh, but with that, like obviously when there's the prototyping and everything else going on, you're also seeing, does it work the way it's supposed to, right. or are there other bugs and stuff? If there's like features people see coming up behind a flag, do you, encourage people to play with it to see if like they get you know or do people give feedback or like is that a good thing yes that's a great thing please please use it i very much encourage it i, I think it's hard to get people to do it because you know people are working <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I always love people to be exploring the prototypes like making their own demos because that's how we there's that's the opportune moment to make change to the feature too uh, that feedback is super super valuable um and also if you or someone listening is interested in working on these features specifically um open ui is a community group it's not a working group so you don't need to be invited by an organization you could be a community member um so it's a little bit easier to join than more like a standards body mm -hmm. um and you can join the conversations and sometimes they're kind of boring but i think that, that they're interesting and uh you know discussing real issues and and real cases and uh, things that need to be resolved to be able to specify it properly and then ship it I think the open UI I first learned about because of the select list um, and that I sort of started following some of the conversations um, just around it. And you start realizing sort of why sometimes things are more complicated than you assume when it's just like, well, just make it stylable, go. And it's like, well, there, you know, there's more to it than that. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> Anchor is particularly extremely complicated. So is select. Yeah. Um, and there's so much that is involved in it that you wouldn't even think about. Like what happens to the anchor when you have it inside of a scroller and it scrolls out of view? Does it stay visible? Does it hide? Like, what is the point at which you hide it? Like, uh, how do you animate the position sets? If you have something like a tether, which is um, a feature for that little arrow, you know, that's that's moving into V2. But mm -hmm. then how do you animate that when you animate the position sets from left to right? <laughs> you know, what if you have a border around it? How do you customize that? There's just so many open questions that kind of build on each other. And Anchor specifically uh, overlaps so many things. Rendering, layout, like there's also, it's overlap with popover because mm -hmm. that's a pretty common use case. So, you know, there's interesting interactions there. Um, anyway, you can, you can anchor multiple things. There's 
a lot of neat features and open questions. <laughs> so obviously these are all sort of the future of, of what's coming. Um, and hopefully we don't have to wait too long, but there, there is a bit of a ways to go. But in, as I I'd sort of mentioned before, we had Grid that came out. And then since Grid, we've sort of had a lot of other new stuff. We have container queries and has, and I, I'm never going to name everything because we'd be here all day. Um, I'm curious, since say around when Grid came out, if what you're, it doesn't have to be like this big game changing feature. It could be something really small, but just like if you have a favorite thing uh, that sort of has popped up in the last year or two, or you know, if you can't pick one thing, that's cool. But is there any like features one that you're using favorite. all the time that you're just so happy to have? <laughs> There's a lot. Um, okay, I would say container queries is a, the first thing that pops to my mind because it's just been one of the things that developers have been asking for for so long that we didn't know if we could even implement it. I remember mm -hmm. when I joined Google, I was talking to like Tab Atkins and Adam Argyle about this, but you know, container queries. And it just was one of those things that was like, just not possible in the way that the browser was in, engines worked, mm -hmm. but then Tab was like, but actually there are some changes that are coming. So, maybe. Um, so it's just been so cool to see like that whole life cycle and the feature is really useful. Um, the has selector is probably even more useful than container queries because it lets you do so much. It's so flexible. It it really was such a big missing feature from the platform. So I'm really excited to see that one land. Um, uh, those are the two that kind of immediately pop to mind and popover because mm -hmm. popover enables so much like built in interaction in the browser, like the light dismiss capabilities, like the ability to be on the top layer. Um, there's just the declarative nature of creating something like that without having to add additional scripting. And speaking of that, like scroll driven animations are really, really cool. And you could do so much. It's not just like full page scrolly telling like inside of components too. Um, that was four features. <laughs> And this was just part of an hour long interview that I had with you now, where we talked about a lot of other CSS goodness, but also other things like the benefits of blogging, the importance of community. And we even managed to get into the disaster that was my home ex sewing project back when I was in high school, among a bunch of other topics as well. If you'd like to check out that full interview, it is on my second channel, or you can also get it in podcast form. Links to both of those should be on screen right now. And they're also down in the description, along with links to everything that Yuna is up to, including the must listen to CSS podcast. A huge thank you to Yuna for joining me. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.